today we continue following the Lewis and Clark expedition. Destination St. Louis. We'll begin at Fort Massac State Park, their first major stop after they left the falls of the Ohio. Also, Metropolis, Illinois because Superman, of course. Then Fort Jefferson Memorial Cross, from where you can almost see the confluence of the Ohio and the mighty Mississippi. Then we'll stop by the actual confluence before arriving at the gateway to the west. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. Well, good morning. It is a beautiful morning here in Illinois at Fort Massac State Park. And uh, let's explore the state park, shall we? By the way, Pelistar has been working intermittently. Too many trees. All right, let's do it. Well, here we are at the visitor center, and I'm assuming the fort must be that, or a replica of it. So. Let's see if they have any maps. Here's some information about George Rogers Clark, conqueror of the Old Northwest and the Illinois Campaign. This is actually the George Rogers Clark Discovery Trail. The Sac Village. Hmm, that's gonna be cool if they ever build it. And what do we have here? Well, of course, the Lewis and Clark kill boat. Because on November 11, 1803, the expedition arrived here at the fort which had been rebuilt nine years earlier during the Northwest Indian War. Although, the original fort had been built by the French in 1757, only to be burned to the ground by the Chickasaw sometime after 1764. They have several displays depicting life during the era, and some of the history, what has changed and what hasn't. <laughs> For example, the design of an axe is virtually the same. Yeah, they gave me this map, which is pretty much useless for what I want to do, but it's all right. We're gonna see what this is, the fort right here, and then and then we'll do the, it's the, called the Hickory Nut Trail. And that they were very helpful and very nice. They just don't have like a proper trail map. <laughs> Let's explore the fort. But first, check it out. There's a statue of George Roger Clark at the original site of the fort. Oh yeah, this is what Fort Massac would have looked like back in 1802. That's the, 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 the replica, dates back to, to what it would have looked in that era. And I guess they had like a vegetable garden here. And I'm sorry about the noise, but they're mowing the lawn here. You gotta have a nice lawn, right? As I mentioned, this would have been where the original fort stood. And that's a rather flattering statue of George Roger Clark, as a young man during the Illinois campaign. Here's Clark as an older man. By the way, we're getting like perfect weather today. It's, I mean, it's still early. I mean, it's uh, 10 a.m., early 75 degrees. It is getting warmer in the sun. But beautiful, this dry moat right here. And of course, the, the Ohio River onto this side. Well, let's explore the fort a little bit. During their stay here from November 11th through the 13th, 1803, Meriwether Lewis hired George Droulard, son of a French Canadian and Shawnee woman fluent in French, English, and a few Native American languages, not to mention a master of sign language. He would come very handy during the expedition. Here, he also recruited two more men before he continued towards winter camp near St. Louis. Here's the sign, recapping everything we've learned so far. It is not Superman, it is Big John. And now we're gonna take a historical detour and see another point of interest in the area, right here at the city of Metropolis, Illinois. Hey, 
I want to thank Trade Coffee for sponsoring this episode. And, like I'm sure most of you, I used to drink the same coffee all the time, but not anymore. Coffee like wine is a fascinating world with so many flavor profiles, and Trade makes it easy to navigate. Trade Coffee is a personalized coffee subscription service that connects coffee drinkers with independent roasters from all over the country. They have 450 coffees from 55 different craft roasters who use sustainable, ethically sourced beans from farmers all around the world. Each bag is roasted fresh per customer, whether you like whole beans or ground, or maybe you want fine grain like me for espresso, or you prefer medium or coarse for percolator, French press, they got you covered. Pick your favorite or get a new coffee every single time, and you set the amount and the frequency. You can either take a quiz to fine-tune your taste, or choose from one of their curated collections, or choose from my collection. Yeah, now when you go to the website by following the link in the description, one of the choices is the Traveling Robert collection. How cool is that? Well, today I'm going to make this Rocketeer from Atomic Coffee Roasters. And uh, it, it is a blend from Honduras and Guatemala, a varietal bourbon carimor processed fully washed, elevation 1000 to 1600 meters. And the flavor has notes of cedar, chocolate chips and baking spices. Let's make some coffee. Mm. Get what you want when you want and with Trade it is easier than ever. Right now Trade is offering new subscribers a total of $30 off your first order plus free shipping when you go to drinktrade.com slash traveling Robert. That is more than 40 cups of coffee for free. Mm. That's drinktrade.com slash traveling Robert for $30 off. But it would make nothing but sense for the city of Metropolis, Illinois, to have a life, some larger than life uh, statue of Superman, right? <laughs> oh, the things you find uh, along the road. We have a Superman museum. Well, the city of Metropolis, Illinois, is milking Superman for all his worth, and why wouldn't they? I mean, they are Superman's hometown, and they did spend 120 grand on the largest Superman statue in the world, after all. This freshly painted 1993 depiction replaced a 1986 not so great effort, which was vandalized with bullet holes, and this one they seem to like. We're not going into the museum, but let's at least check out the gift shop. They have the phone booth. Maybe I can buy a t shirt and look like Sheldon. Maybe I don't need that t-shirt after all. There's this super museum and gift store. Let's see what else they have. I'd say if you're a Superman fan or into comic books and superheroes, you'd be in Haven here. Very cool town here, Metropolis. They sure are uh, milking the superhero motif for all it's worth. I mean, <laughs> Superman approves. All right, let's go someplace else. Let's go a little farther west, towards the confluence of the Ohio and the Mississippi. Another pivoting point in the Lewis and Clark expedition. Here we are, Fort Jefferson Memorial Park. It is said that Lewis and Clark visited here on November 18th, 1803, during their stay at the mouth of the Ohio, just over three miles northwest of here. And for the first time on our Lewis and Clark trail trip, we get to see the, the mighty Mississippi. There's a big barge struggling upstream, just as they would have. I mean, the confluence of the Ohio and the Mississippi is just about a couple miles that way. And, uh, you know, they, they were having a, like, a great time 
going down the Ohio, but once they, they turned and started going up the Mississippi, that's when it got really difficult and, uh, and slow going. There's a big cross, cross there. This is uh, the Fort Jefferson Hill here. I don't think there's a fort anymore. I'm gonna see if I can fly the drone. If I can, well, you'll see it. If I can't, it will not. And uh, let's go all the way up to the cross, see what it is like. Before we go right up to the cross, let's do a quick flight because while we can't really see the confluence from the ground, I'm pretty sure the drone will be able to see it. There it is, big muddy, and the barge struggling upstream. And from here, we can actually see the confluence of the two great rivers, the Ohio on the right, the Mississippi on the left. This is all you can see from the top of the bluff. The confluence just past the river bend. Well, in the words of that phrase I learned from, uh, from Rick Steves, actually. What do you think? Commanding view. Looks like they're building something here, but it's... Uh, remains unfinished, you know, just a few cinder blocks there. There's the cross of the confluence and let's, let's see what it says here. Look at the pictures when they were building it. Oh, it's, it's just fairly new in the 90s. The cross was completed in 1999. Well, let's see the historical markers, especially the one about the Lewis and Clark expedition. All right, let's continue. Look at all these barges as we drive across the Ohio one more time. After tomorrow, the journey will be along the Mississippi and later up the Missouri. We're going towards the very southern tip of Illinois, near the town of Cairo, more specifically Fort Defiance State Park and the confluence. Also, the Illinois-Kentucky-Missouri tri-state border, which would be somewhere underwater. If you recall, I was here back in 2020. I believe it was 2020. And um, I came here to Cairo, Illinois. Oh, that's a big, that was a big bug. It smells like, doesn't smell very good here. Maybe you think some people are making this their residence. So yeah, that would be the very spot where the, the Ohio joins the Mississippi and they both become the Mississippi uh, continuing uh, downstream. And this is another important spot in the Lewis and Clark trip because they were coming down the Ohio and then they started going up the Mississippi. And in the diary, you know, they say that that's when they realized that they, they would need more men because, um, you know, ro moving those large uh, uh, watercraft upstream on these major rivers uh, would be a major problem for them. So yeah, this is it. The confluence of the Ohio and the Mississippi and Fort Jefferson, where we were just there right now, would be over that bend of the Mississippi down there. Oddly enough, when I came here in 2020, I barely noticed this sculpture 
But then again, back then I wasn't looking for things related to Lewis and Clark. Here we go. On November 1803, Meriwether Lewis and William Clark and their growing contingent of Corps of Discovery spent five days here teaching each other celestial navigation and surveying skills. So apparently, the confluence moved. Uh, the confluence of these great rivers, which in 1803 was located just south of 2nd Street in present-day Cairo. We, we have to go there, right? <laughs> so the sculpture is called Proceeding On. As you can see, there's like an arrow pointing up the Mississippi. I think we have to go see it from above again. Even better, let's fly the drone one more time. Can't help but notice the difference in the color of the water. The Mississippi, living up to its big muddy moniker. Always fascinated by all these barges and the amount of cargo traffic that goes up and down all these rivers. In the time of Lewis and Clark, this was actually the only practical way to transport heavy cargo. That's why it was so important for them to find a waterway to the Pacific. Here we are. I think this is the actual spot where the confluence used to be. We've got one more stop today, and that is the town of Paducah, where we're going to say goodbye to Kentucky this time around. But first, let's take a look at Cairo, Illinois, and all the urban blight. To be fair, this town has gone through a lot when it comes to racial tensions and economic decline, floods. As of 2020, the town had lost about 89% of its population from its peak in 1920. Let's stop here real quick and see if we can take a look at the river. And here they have this levee and the wall to protect the town from possible flooding. Very similar actually to the one they have in Paducah, Kentucky, which is, as I said, where we're going next. The historic downtown here seems to be abandoned for the most part, which is very sad for such a historic town. This part seems a little more alive. Do you think Cairo is slowly coming back? I sure hope so. When the weather is good, this part of the country is gorgeous, so green. So we decided to come back to Metropolis and make some dinner in the RV, and then we'll go to Paducah after all. Mm. <laughs> it's time for another RV cooking show.
Off we go. This is called the Brookport Bridge, spanning the Ohio River. Unusually long and narrow and historic, it dates back to 1929. Duca, home to the National Quilt Museum. And spoiler alert, let me get that out of the way, we're not gonna visit. But they are a harvest host, so one of these days, when fortune and fair winds take us back to these parts, we might do it. It is a good looking downtown, let me tell you, and the wall by the river is decorated with all these murals depicting the history of the town. And I'm sure there's going to be at least one about Lewis and Clark, right? We visited Paducah back in 2017 when we came to this area to witness the total solar eclipse and we ate at this place called the Shandy's, which unfortunately is no longer in business. And here's that famous wall with all the murals. Let's go see the river first real quick and then we'll walk along the wall and maybe Maybe have our last bourbon in Kentucky. And we have a cruise ship in town. It is the American Duchess. You can almost see the keel boat, Lewis and Clark coming down the river. Of course, there's a cruise ship in town. That's probably why it's so lively here today. But uh, yeah, this is the confluence of the Tennessee River and the Ohio. Here at the port of Paducah, Kentucky. Let's explore the town. We have live music to entertain visitors coming on the cruise. Not the best sounding system, I must say, but hey. I don't know, one of these days it may be fun to take one of these river cruises. Let's walk along the wall. And here we have our Lewis and Clark portrayal. It is one of the more faded ones, so hopefully they will retouch it at some point. Here's an ICRR Mikado 1518 steam locomotive. It is a fascinating machine. The Paducah Railroad Museum is also nearby. What can I tell you? I like locomotives. Big machines like this. those springs. <laughs> Please do not climb on train, okay. Apparently riding on it is okay. Or people will do it anyway. What can I say? Contemporary petroglyphs. They do offer horse-drawn carriage tours. Had we come earlier, maybe, probably we would have taken one of those Let's go back and see the part that we missed over there. 
George Roger Clark, perhaps? So that would have been Paducah in 1873. There were steamboats, the confluence of the two rivers, and we are somewhere around here right now. Well, I for one am really glad they're restoring some of these murals. It is such a great way to learn about the history of this area. Of course, the main thing to do in this town is the quilt museum, the National Quilt Museum, which I believe they happen to be a, a harvest host as well. Spoiler alert, we're not gonna go there. We're just gonna walk along these streets, see, see if we can, you know, see what calls our attention. Such a pleasant evening here in Paducah. I kind of wish we hadn't had dinner in the RV, so we could have perhaps enjoyed dinner at one of the restaurants. But hey, it is always healthier and more economic to eat at home, and I bet you we're gonna return to Paducah one of these days. Wow, 1827, very historic town, historic indeed. We're going to drink our last bourbon in Kentucky and then we're gonna call it a night. and the American Duchess is leaving port, going somewhere up the Ohio. One of these days, one of these days. And with that, we're saying goodbye to Kentucky. Our next destination, St. Louis. As I mentioned, coming up next, the road will take us to St. Louis, Missouri, where the Lewis and Clark expedition spent the winter of 1803 to 1804. We're going to visit the Gateway Arch, of course, and enjoy many of the other things the city and the surrounding area have to offer. But more about that on the next episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and see you on the road. Riding in my